Hey, so, hello everyone, um, bit of a start to the video, this is episode, well, this is the first episode of actually converting the bear, and um, <laughs> straight after the previous video, because Iwin is still here and she does not live here, sadly, um, <laughs> oh, wish. but this is her first screw to undo, ever, okay, going. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Start. Okay, right. Is it in the right way? Now push and do it slowly. <laughs> there it goes. So, on your time lapse, you go. So, good morning everyone, as you can tell, it's early again, <laughs> as uh, the last video started out, which if you haven't seen you can go check out, out there, um, basically, um, last night, uh, after my girlfriend left, um, I walked back, because you know, we got to walk up the drive, and then I just saw the van, I sat in it for a minute, it was like, you got a van. And then, um, then I felt playing with a few locks. And uh, I'll deal with the sliding door first. There's a lot to talk about. So the, the back um, door and the sliding door, the loading doors, they have the, a deadlock. Apart from, it's not like any deadlock I've seen. So basically they'd bypass the handle. I know this is the passenger, this handle here. They'd bypassed it and made the keys like actually turn like the thing you would do to pull the handle open which is kind of secure but then it's not ideal if you're gonna live in it because if you're on a hill or you've just gone out and someone accidentally shuts the door and the keys are inside then you're locked out unlike if the door shuts normally you can just then open it I need to unlock it quickly um, which I'll do in a sec so apparently the sliding door didn't work and so I didn't bother trying to make it work. I just went in through the back doors and opened it. But it turns out um, I was moving the inside handle, which supposedly does work, and then moving the key, and they were pulling the same thing right at the other end of the sliding door um, on the latch. And I was like, well, it must work then. So I pushed it in, turned the key, and then like kind of pulled it out using the, the handle and uh, slid it and it worked so it does work absolutely fine um, it's just like normally like when you're inside you click it open and then you push the door open and when you're on the outside you pull the handle it kind of does that pulling motion but when you push a key in it doesn't there we go, a bit temperamental And there we go, now we're into the van. The back doors, um, I haven't taken the door card off the, the one with the handle. Um, so I haven't done that, so that still runs off the key. But uh, I did take the one off the other one, and basically you had to pull the little lever at the top. Oh, camera just lowered. You had to pull the little lever at the top of the door on like this side, the passenger side, I had to pull it to open it because that lever wasn't working. And I worked out why. Very simple. They make the lever out of plastic and it basically it just sheared off and now the metal square like door bit, the handle just spins around that so it doesn't work. So I wanted to buy a new one, looked on eBay and you can actually just buy the whole system including the whole locking thing just for 15 quid so I might just do that also I can't find the handle alone um, 
so yeah but that's the sliding door now open and if I go around to the other side go into the back I'll show you how I open that which is basically just using the key so here we are around here and if I get the deadlock key and I pop this and there you go that opens but this handle does absolutely nothing but basically that's open and then this like I said doesn't work because I don't know if you can see in in there it's like broken and basically the square like thing in the door just that just spins around it and doesn't actually use it so the next thing that I want to do today and I'll show you guys along is take the door card off this door that you can't actually see um, and see if I can bypass the key again and then I just won't need this key at all. So everyone, as expected, it's exactly the same as the other one, which basically, um, as you can see, this is the key and it turns and pulls that um, and it grips that little groove in the cable sheathing and then pulls the cable through. And basically just up here, let me get the light in there. Uh, where is it? Okay, there on that little groove there, that's where the cable clips in. And then down there onto the handle part is where the little like hammer head thing on the cable clips in and then the handle pulls it. So basically all I need to do is take the cable out from there, which is very easy, as you can see, out, and then move it to the outer handle. So here we go everyone, ready? Move my phone out of the way so it doesn't get lost in there. If we shut that, it's not shut, and then we should be able to open it. I'm gonna go check I've got my keys on me. See, that's another thing with the other one. I always made sure I got my keys on me because once that door's shut, you have to open it with a key. And if your keys are in there, you're in trouble. So I'm gonna go around there um, and lock it and come around, check its locks. So, I don't know if you heard that clicking noise. Ah, oh, crap. That's supposed to be locked. Sorry, I've been out of frame then. Where are you falling over? Um, basically, what I think is that top catch that I have to replace on the sliding door. It's like got an open edge and it's like on a pivot. And it, I think that kind of helps push the door open, like pull it out so then it slides. And I think because that's broken, it's not doing it. Also, there's a massive gap and the rainwater's gonna get in. So, hi guys. Sorry, the lens is steaming up for no reason at all. <laughs> and I can't exactly clean it. My hands aren't clean. Um, basically, I've just come up here because you're on the van. I'm just gonna have a look at the van roof, which looks a bit brown, but not rusty or bad. Um, also, I found out the sliding door wasn't locking so basically I've just unlocked my doors and now anyone can come up to them and open them but so they must have bypassed the central locking to put that key in because imagine putting the key in and then it being locked and you have to go into the driver's door and then unlock it and then unlock it again so I reckon they've bypassed it but surely you can put it back. The, the central locking units are still there and there's still power to them because I can hear them both clicking and attempting to lock. They're just not locking. So I'm not sure whether I try to buy new units, whether I just keep the keys or what, I don't know. But um, I'll show you guys the roof. As you can see, there's a tree. <laughs> and yeah, nice, dirty, dirty roof. The top catch for put that over there because it's totally wrecked I can actually show you it now as you can see it just flops around doing nothing 
um, and getting in the way and it's actually just getting trash being there but it needs to be fixed whether I put it back on the key or I try and fix the central locking because it's there it's trying to work but it's not so we'll see what happens guys put you on a time lapse and I shall clear out the back and I'll probably sweep out most of the dirt with a dustpan there's also some plastic panels behind the main wall panels they're off they're just propped up against the wall same with that one it's not attached oh and also this like because it's got plastic panels behind like someone's it's not factory fitted this ply so someone's put it in it's a right bodge <laughs> and there's literally like three screws in each wall and that silly little piece of wood across the top of the bulkhead was held in with two screws literally and the piece of metal was easy to come out it was there was no problem but on each different attachment they used a different type of screw one was a torx bit one was an allen key and one was spanners why just use the same <laughs> So there we go guys, that is what can come out of a van. Now that, there's all sorts down there. There's an absolute ton of stuff all the way down there. All there. It's just everywhere, the fire, everything in there is all part of it. Yeah, so the next task is, a big task is to get all of that crap out of the van, as you can see, all in there. And what I'm gonna be using is a small wire brush, just in case, you might need to get into some small spaces. It's less harsh, harsh big wire brush to get rid of like some varnish and stuff. Try not to strip back the paint too much, obviously. Some wire wool to get rid of anything small. So kind of that size, that size, then that size. And then a dust pan and brush to just get rid of all that dirt. One of the half of, one of a couple of the ribs, like in the dips, um, is completely full. Um, of dirt from like halfway the van to the front so yeah quite a lot of dirt but uh, yeah so let's get on with it Hello everyone, so just been at that for God knows how long, not sure. Um, hands aching now, uh, I'll tell you what I've done and it's harder than you think. Um, sun's come out, which is lovely. <laughs> um, and I'm about to go for a cup of tea, but before I do, I'm gonna show you around what I have done. So I can't be asked to change the microphone around and I haven't really been doing it lately, but yeah. So here, oh, zoom out. This, this may look like mud, but no, it's like cement or whatever. I've been at jabbing that for like ages. Me and my dad, my dad did that little corner there, like that. We've got it pretty, pretty cleared out. Um, everything's going in there. I tore the bits of plastic off there. There wasn't one this side, it was just that side and that side. Um, and yeah, that's just like, Pins are annoying, might have to get like a hammer, teeth behind there, and then uh, pull them out and hope they come out. Because I can't be asked to use my fingers for that. Ow. Uh, but yeah, very clean, not a single piece of rust. Like none. There's, a, there's like some orange down there where rust was probably trying to uh, have a go at starting, as you can see down there. But None, no actual rust anywhere. That's it. So, I'm very happy. And I think it was damp along that edge, but there's like, well, not now because the sun's come out and the roof's warm, but there's normally bits of condensation in the morning. So, and it just drips onto the floor. Floor's a bit damp. And then uh, there was a load of sand down there, which was obviously holding that moisture. Um, but it's done really well, as you can see. Like, there's no direct rust. So, yeah, very happy with that. All of this is a nightmare. I'm going to have to grind off, I can't, um, not drill because that takes forever, I'm going to grind off all of these uh, mounting points. 
So, yeah, all the van build so far is commencing. <laughs> I'm so excited. Like, yeah, like I said, the headroom, I can do that. So take away, what, 75 mil plus ceiling floor, let's say 85 mil, 90 max, so 10 centimeters of insulation and paneling. I can like still jump or tiptoe at least. It's it's great. I'm 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 happy I got this fan. It's been great. Need to take these silly little lights off too. There you go. If you know Pilgrim Pods, I'm kind of following his kind of so far quite directly because it's a Citroen relay. What he's done is he's put a head unit in there, like a cheap twenty-five pound eBay one. Um, which has got like your Androids, it's got like Android based and it's got like maps, it's got a reversing camera system, um, the more I can't remember off the top of my head and you can sync your phone to it and stuff and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, uh, get the um, reversing camera rear light. So over the next week or so I'm going to be fixing the little door issues and stuff like that, little catches, I'll be fixing that and then I'll be sourcing, hopefully maybe from the scrapyard or something, uh, some windows. But if I can't, my plan is to put one window in there, like where the kitchen's going to go. I haven't talked you through the plans actually, but I will in another video. Uh, where the kitchen's going to be, a w opening window. Um, and if I can source one, like I said, from the scrapyard, there'll be a blank one, just a non-opening one there, normal window. But if I can't, then I'll have to pay, what's 160 quid for an opening window, I think. It's nice to have an opening window near the sink. And then I think what I'm gonna do in the bed area, I'm gonna have a porthole in that one and a porthole in that one over there. Um, and there's still a sliding one in there. And also, sorry, a porthole in the sliding door too. And then you've got three portholes and a thing and that'll come to a total of like 200 quid for the windows or something like that. Um, and you'll end up with more windows. So yeah, cause that's just so expensive. I just, I can't afford that. So anyway, again, I've been rambling on for way too long. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave this here, although the floor's not totally clean. It's a sweep. You don't need to see a time lapse of that. And in the next video, it'll be installing the few little things, like I said, the little door catches and stuff. So yeah, if you did enjoy the video, please do give it a big old thumbs up. Drop a comment down below, any thoughts, any help, anything I mean I have done it before but any help would always be appreciated and subscribe if you haven't already because it really helps me and hit the bell icon so you know when I next upload because it will be some Wednesdays not everyone I'll see you next Wednesday